It is, however. Uh, it's not always the good things that happen in the theater. It's Laundry Sunday in Saarbrücken and let's talk about something less technical and less computer-like. Projections are light. When I'm projecting on something on the stage, I'm basically lighting it. With my content, of course, but there is something very special that I want to talk about today, which is virtual lighting. Uh, let me explain. Virtual projection lighting isn't just mapping bright areas onto something that you project on. It is introducing the features of real light onto an object that's on stage and possibly can't get those features. Like shadows from a light source that isn't on stage, gloss or other ambient reflections. So basically everything that is not on the object itself. And thus revealing new qualities or features of that object. To do this, you will need four essential things. First, the object, of course, then a projector, uh, mainly one that is uh, high resolution and will at least cover the object, if not a little more, if you want to drop a virtual shadow behind the object, for example, to make the illusion perfect. Then you will need software that can deal with a 3D object to fake lights and material on it and you use a pretty good 3D object which should be obtained by either just making it well rebuilding the object in a 3D program or making a scan but why all this trouble well the purpose is to induce meaning a character or just a synopsis like the sun moving from one side to the other so the day passing so we're charging the object with meaning. That's why we do it. And that's all. If you do it properly, your object is gonna develop a character and people will relate to it. But then again, it's super important not to overdo it and always keep in mind mappings like that, they take a while. So perhaps don't do it when you're in rush. I really don't know what this is, but it obviously went wrong. There is one thing we need for proper artificial lighting on a 3D model, and that is a scan. So, first thing to do is photogrammetry. Let's take a lot of photos of what we're going to project on. This is the moment in the video where I remind you to like this video and share it to your social media if you like what I'm saying, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of it. And it's also the moment to remind you that those theatres in your community are full of remarkably great artists, so go visit them. It's always worth coming. When you're done taking literally hundreds of photos of your object from every possible angle, you drag them into Visual SFM, which will do its magic more fluently and a little more stable under Windows. After a while, actually after quite a while, you'll end up with a point cloud that can then be transformed into a surface. But don't be too optimistic, you'll have to put in some more work just manually removing vertices and cleaning up the mesh. The 3D object that you receive at the end of this process can then be dragged into Element 3D or any other 3D program. I personally prefer Video Copilot's Element 3D because then I can work in my normal ambient, which is After Effects after all. Mm. Nah, honestly. How can people think that living like Casey Neistat could actually work for normal people like me? I'm just getting to work, it's 8 o'clock in the evening and I'm starting my workday now. There is no way I could achieve that by getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I could stay up until 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm, 
mapping is a huge overstatement of what I'm doing. I'm actually just turning around the object in the 3D program until it fits. The secret here is to have the virtual camera in After Effects set up like the projector's lens. Same focal length, same distance, same height, same angle. And that's it. And that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. Now we're doing two things. Uh, we hook up the computer to our projector that is pointing towards our scene. Uh, and then we get changed because I'm sweating like a, like a worker, actually. Okay, let's go. So this is my head I just produced and there's the real thing. Well, and then you just take this image, wiggle around with um, rotation and all that stuff to make it fit to your scene. Well, that's it. Nothing more to that. It's pretty simple. If I can do it, you can do it. And that's what you're aiming for. Align all the um, features of the head with the actual model, if it works out. That's, that's what you don't want. Yeah, well, to be honest, um, I use masks to make the outside because sometimes things just don't work out like they should. So you can trick. Always, always have a look at the stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> always have a look at the stage and um, you'll be fine. To avoid a mess with cables that roll from one side to the other, just use a trick that is actually, you're grabbing it like this, fold it in like this, and then you take it over like this, and under, over, under. <laughs> oh, it, it is confusing, I know, but it's the only way to roll a cable without. Fold. Roll. Now this cable won't krangel, as they call it in German. And of course you can change all the other properties that you can access in a 3D program, like the material for example, make it really glossy or just very matte, or change the color, change the texture, but don't overdo it. Mostly it's those subtle effects that really count. So the simpler the better, and uh, in the end there is reality. So we can't really change reality, we can just add to the illusion that people want to see on stage. So basically, less is more. But of course, if you're not in a theatre like I am, and you don't have to respect the artists on stage, there is no need to hold back, just go full throttle and um, give the illusions all their space. But here's some real life advice. As a video artist, you're dependent on what you rendered. So don't hold back when you are about to try out all those possible images and all those possible illusions. Just render them, have them ready when you're in rehearsal and present them. Because how else will you try to find out what's suitable for the place and uh, kill your darlings? Sometimes what you like the most just doesn't fit the frame you're putting it in. So, deleting footage is one of my favorite activities. Just, um, yeah, don't bother. I mean, you have to try out and, uh, yeah, throw it away if it doesn't fit. And after all, if you're working in a theater, it's not about you and your creations. It's about the ensemble on stage. So, um, you and all the others. Don't be a dick. Just delete what you have if it doesn't fit the evening and, uh, trust me. The relation between created footage to footage used on stage versus the relation to created footage and the footage thrown away is like 1 to a 100. So create 100 minutes and use one of them. That's actually a good ratio. What I mean by don't be a dick about it is that don't be this one video artist who has to have his stuff out there on stage and while distracting everybody else from the dancers and um, look for all the attention by the audience. Just 
be this one nice guy who adds to the piece and doesn't want to be the piece. But if you're not in the theater and you're the only one in the show, go for it. Just show them everything. The audience likes big effects. Mm.